41.00.75. That's the close and open of that candle. The small little variance in price, you have to allow for that. Don't let that scare you. Don't let it be a, a source of fear or anxiety. That's normal. That's a normal thing in price delivery. Get this off here. So now price goes up into that area. We want to see, and I would be saying if we were doing a live trade, I'd say we want to see it deliver and go lower now. It goes down. So what's it doing here? It takes out this low here. So now this low to this high here becomes what? A bounce price range. Because the market has delivered both directions of buy side and sell side. Between this here, the, our old range, down to this low here, the market trades back up to what? Consequent encroachment. So consequent encroachment becomes the high end of the new balance price range. Because we've, we've traced back that far, there's no need to worry back to, back to here or this old low. It's, it's already done its work by going back and forth between these two candles. Think about that paint analogy. Are you going to paint the same section of the wall five times? No, you're wasting paint. Price isn't going to waste time. Time is important to it. It only has so many trading hours in the day. So you take your eye and your attention. You, you don't want to do this when price is trading live because you'll miss what you're supposed to be focusing on. But you want to be referring to it while watching price. So again, we're thinking... I'm sorry, I, had to, I thought my son was calling me. The, uh, we're thinking that the price is going to continuously go lower. The market trades back up into this consequent encroachment here, which is now the new high of the balance price range. There's no necessity for it to trade higher. Does the willingness of price reflect wanting to go lower? Yes, it does. It takes out this low here, and then we come back up. What's permissible? If this is a balance price range, it's painted price down, offered sell side, then it offered buy side to the area where we're expecting to see price go to anyway, then it should go lower. It does. It leaves that price range. Can it go back up into this range? Yes. How far? Halfway. Because we're measuring bodies, we're looking at it through the lens of what? Mean threshold. And I should have charged you money for this. <laughs> so here is the mean threshold 4097.50 that's what could reasonably be traded to and it's permissible it means it's allowed you can expect that and it doesn't upset anything the market fails to go there and what does it do it trades lower than that low now so we're expanding our range and it breaks lower we don't even need to go back up to consequent I'm sorry mean threshold we're looking for now any further advancement lower what does this area here now become between mean threshold, which was never hit, this to so this is your new balance price range. Does market want to trade away from that? It does. But now we're late in the day. What time of day? 15, 24, so it's 24 minutes after 3, New York local time. It's going to run. It's going to aggressively reach to the liquidity it's going to aim for for the day. Aggressively runs, trades to whatever 40, 78 and a quarter becomes. I don't even know what that is off the top of my head. In my notes, I don't have anything that jogs my memory to that. It hits it at what time? 15, 34, so 34 minutes after 3. And then... 20 minutes to 4, you want to be sitting and waiting for price to run on liquidity because at 15 minutes of, if you haven't already seen it by then, it's going to really aggressively run on liquidity that has not seen or hasn't been uh, tapped into. Meaning what? I told you the buy side liquidity would be right here. Where does it go? Right there. And now we're in a time of day where it's just going to trade listlessly now between this high and that low. And simply because the market's moving around and fluctuating and it ain't 5 o'clock yet, retail traders are going to try to trade in that and get caught up in a mess. When the only thing it's done is, is create the low, we come off the low, and it, it, it does its simple 
macro. It repeats over and over and over and over again. But reading price and understanding the order flow is essentially what I'm showing you here. Every time we have an overlap of price. If sell side's offered, it means it's going down, a down candle. If you're bearish, you want to see that down close candle be re-delivered with an up close price movement. And then back down. It does not need to close. It doesn't need to close with an up candle if it was a recent down close candle. So what do I mean by that? Um, it will be an example of that. Uh, all right, say, uh, say how we have this down close candle here. Say the next candle opened up and we traded up and overlapped all of that and then went down and made a lower low. And so it will have a wick there. That's the same thing as what I'm saying. Is it has to have both every range between one price level and another to be there to, to be determined and deemed efficiently delivered is between both price points, between any price point range in a price run, it has to offer both directions. It went down and up. 